pass rush is going to be key tonight. And you've got Keon White of the New England Patriots, who already has four sacks, tied for second in the NFL. You've got Jermaine Johnson out for the year, suffered the torn Achilles of his own on Sunday. Will McDonald, the guy that, you know, he had three sacks last week at Tennessee. Hassan Reddick still not around for the Jets. It may come down to something as simple as who can muster pressure on the opposing quarterback to hurry a throw, get a strip sack, get a key sack on a third down that maybe knocks the team out of 57-yard field goal range. But, you know, in a grinded-out kind of a game where the passing isn't going to carry the day, disrupting the ability to pass by putting the quarterback on his rear end, that may be the thing that makes the difference. Well, right. And then the Patriots do have injuries on their offensive line. I mean, they've got guys that are out when it comes low and so. And then, you know, you've got a couple other guys who are questionable there um, in terms of uh, on Winu and, and Andrews. So that's, you know, one of those things where you look at it and you say, okay, where is the edge? Where's the separation? Especially on a Thursday night game, you're going on the road. That could be one of the places where the difference is, you know, especially look, I, I mean, you, tackles being out is one thing, but I think your center not being there and your starting center potentially being out like that can really affect everything on an offense when it comes to protections, especially. So if that is the case where you don't have a lot of those guys, I mean, that could definitely be one of those things that helps determine the game. Uh, and you're right. And the question is, is David Andrews Belichick questionable, which means not right. really questionable at all. We just yes. make everybody questionable. So you don't really know who's yes. going to be up or down <laughs> the, or is it real yeah. questionable? Yes. So we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, so um, Aaron Rodgers has been targeting running backs a lot. Mm -hmm. Brees Hall led the Jets last week in targets with eight, seven receptions. The, the big observation that Belichick made the week one Monday night Manning cast was throw it to Garrett Wilson all the time. It's mm -hmm. Like, gee, Bill, I didn't need an eight-time Super Bowl winner to tell me that. Like, thanks, thanks. Hashtag analysis. Throw it to Garrett Wilson. But Great insight. That, that, would, that would seem to be the way for the Jets offense to be everything that, that it can be. Uh, yes, certainly. I mean, that that's the guy on that offense that I think is the biggest difference maker. And um, we're talking about Garrett Wilson because he's got the ability to run the routes well, but also go up and make the catch as well, go up and make the contested catch. And we saw a little bit of that um, in week one uh, against San Francisco. And so that's something we know that they can do. And I think even going back to hard knocks last year, right? You remember some of the chemistry that they were getting, some of the timing that they were getting and, Obviously, those guys have a lot of respect for Aaron Rodgers and what he's done in the National Football League and all that. And the, But it, you still have to keep building that chemistry on Sundays or Mondays or Thursdays, whatever the case may be, so that you get comfortable when there's a big third down and everybody knows that it's supposed to go to a, a certain place and then you're still able to do it anyway, as Aaron Rodgers was able to do for years and years and years with Devontae Adams in Green Bay. So that's where... You know, you don't necessarily want your running back to lead the team in targets and receptions because, A, that means that the opposing defense is solving you a little bit, right? So that because if that's the case, then you're throwing the ball to the back that much. It probably means you're checking the ball down a lot, right? You're not getting those downfield shots. You're not really even getting more or less intermediate shots, right? So that's one thing where I look at it and I'm saying to myself, yeah, let's, let's make sure Garrett Wilson is more involved so that we're not a team that ends up with a running back that is leading us in targets and receptions. And look, if you're trying to defend an offense that has shown a propensity to throw the ball to running backs for the first two weeks, I'm reminded of something Kyle Shanahan, the 49ers coach said earlier this week when talking about, how the Brian Flores defense in Minnesota bedeviled the San Francisco offense. One of the realities of being highly unpredictable about who's blitzing, when they're blitzing, are they blitzing, it makes it harder for your running back to leak out as a check down option because he's got to hang mm. around and make sure he doesn't have to pick up a blitzer. So yeah. That there, if you if you want to take the checkdowns out of the game, 
That's one way to do it. Now, Aaron Rodgers may burn you and make you pay because he may be more adept than other quarterbacks at finding the guy who's going to be wide ass open if you send pressure uh-huh. from a spot that leaves a guy open. But that's a strategy for taking checkdowns out of the game if that's what the Patriots choose to do. And that's what makes this one of the things that makes this game interesting to me. The Patriots have 15 years of institutional knowledge about Aaron Rodgers. Not that they saw him all the time, but Bill Belichick probably had the full dossier on what to do with Aaron Rodgers. And there's a certain amount of that information that is still there. And Gerard Mayo was there. You know, I mean, you pick up some of that stuff, even if Belichick absconded with everything that he ever generated and left none of it behind. There's a certain level of institutional knowledge on how to deal with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Come on. That's not it's not quite Columbia level. (laughs) <laughs> but but if he did, if he, you know, if Mayo picks some stuff up from Belichick about dealing with Rodgers, even if it's just Belichick sitting around just fascinated by Rodgers film and saying, look at this, you know, look at this freaking guy. I mean, I'm picking up a lot of stuff from Devin McCourty about how Bill Belichick would like talk and and deal with things. But it, it makes me wonder how much of the fumes of Bill Belichick will be present tonight in whatever the Patriots do to try to counter what we've seen from Aaron Rodgers his entire career. Yeah, and I think that that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you don't be, you can't be around somebody who's leading an organization for as long as Mayo was, both as, the, as a player and then as a coach, and not pick certain things up, you know? And maybe there are certain things where you look at it and you're like, huh, that's not something I would do myself. Or then other things there are where it's like, okay, that's something that I can – adapt and and mimic and emulate in my own way so yeah i think that is one of those things that's interesting about this and you know when you're when you're going into last year for instance right and you know that rogers is going to be a part of your division it's one of the things that you might do a little bit of work on in the off season is just uh, like study him a little bit more think about what are some of the ways that we can try to attack him as a divisional opponent that we're going to see twice a year So that's another one of those elements that, you know, you talk about fumes of Bill Belichick. I think that that is something that they might have talked about in last year's offseason, just given the fact that he was going to be a part of their division. And now he is and he's actually playing as opposed to last year when he only lasted four snaps. And you knew you were going to see him early the third Thursday, technically second Thursday night game of the season hi it's mike florio thanks for watching pft on youtube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk